As promised, I'm going to show you how to gloss this door. Now, I've already sanded it down using a sponge pad, which is 120. Um, I've dusted it off. I've also cleaned around the glass and washed the glass. So that's all now ready for a coat of gloss. I'll show you um, what I do with my gloss because <clears throat> sometimes if I'm using a new tin you don't have to strain it you can just pop your tin open and off you go but this paint I've had open on a job so as soon as I've used a tin once I'll always strain it the next time round just to make sure I get that perfect finish brushes that I cleaned out the other day now <clears throat> first off open your tin No need to wipe round the lid because I've not shook it up. That's one reason I don't shake it up because you don't get paint on the lid. Give it a good stir up. Now, because I've had this open, it has probably slightly thickened. So when I pour myself some out, I'm going to thin it slightly with a bit of white spirit only ever so slightly and then got a piece of stocking Top. Bit of tape. Got to make sure it's quite tight around the top. Otherwise, you'll end up with like a bubble of paint coming out the side. don't need to pull loads out. That's probably plenty of that. Uh, I can already tell, like I said, it's a little bit thick, so I am going to add a little bit of white spirit. Like I said, just a spot. Then you've got to work your brushes in, allow that paint to get into the stock. Just means you're not starting with a dry brush. There's nothing worse than starting with a dry brush. Same with your two inch, although I'm going to leave that till I've done my cutting in and then I'll work that in. So when it comes to glossing, you've obviously got to break it up um, and not have 
uh, any wet edges left too long. Now you could cut in all around the glass on one section um, but you're going to then possibly get paint onto this edge which that will be drying and onto that edge which can affect the finish so usually what I do is I'll bring all the centre down one side and then bring the other bit down and then do the cross sections and then once I've done those sections I'll drop down to the bottom do the panels at the bottom and then drop back up to the top and do this section and then back down to the bottom to finish the other sections finishing with the sides so starting off like I say with this bit here I'll move the camera so you can get a better angle on, on that there because I don't think you can quite see it from there or can you we'll go with it I will change the camera throughout I like say so I've worked my brush in to the paint Take time, you don't have to rush. It's not easy doing these mouldings. Um, if you put too much paint on, it's going to run everywhere, so you've got to try and make sure you spread it out nicely. And always go over you and check your work because if you spot a run, you just you know, wipe it out as you're working. Captain Water. The thing with using a brush, as you're working, there's bits in the stock that are drying, and you've still got to clean them out every now and then to make sure you get a perfect finish. Right, so I'm going to move the camera now because I'm dropping onto these next sections, but I'll show you cutting in some closer. So never start right in a corner because you'll just get a lump of paint there and you'll find it difficult to spread out. So always start a bit away and then work into each of the corners. It's not easy with um, glass like this when it's not been bedded proper. Uh, I've actually gone round and done some filling on it, but I think I need to do a little bit more in places, um, which is not a problem because once I've put this first coat on the gloss, uh, what I'll do, come on, I'm trying to fill that edge going down there, but like I say it's a bit difficult with the type of wood it is and the way it's been glazed. You've no need to put loads of gloss on because it's about getting the sheen level. It's, it's nice working with oil. Um, as long as the sheen level is on there, that's good enough. So once you've cut down that one side, bring in the other side, filling in the middle bits. It's never easy doing a door that has been stained and then you're asked to do it white. It's an absolute nightmare to be honest. Um, just to get the right level of opacity on it is just hard. Sharp edges on the wood and things. Just You keep scrubbing the paint off so it may look as though I'm 
painting slowly, but I'm actually trying to get the correct level of paint on it all so it looks right when it's dry. You know, I could try and brush it, but then it wouldn't look as good. Always checking for any build up of paint with gloss. Once you've brought that middle section down, you can start with the horizontal sections. Also, make sure you've got a cloth with you. Now, it's important really what type of cloth you use because you don't want anything like a towel cloth. You want a nice smooth cloth and a blade with a square edge. What you can do is you wrap your cloth onto that and then you've got a perfect cloth that's not going to touch the paintwork. You know, if you get any on the glass, you can wipe it off very easily. To do those top edges, I've got per steps because I just you can't quite see that edge of glass, and uh, there's nothing worse than just getting paint on your glass because you can't be bothered just to get that little bit higher. That one. Good thing about oil gloss few passes and it, it actually builds up, it grips the surface and builds up. Oh, like water based. Water based seems to just you know come off literally as you're putting it on. You can't seem to build it up but with this oil it seems to uh, grip the surface a lot more like you would expect oil to. Pulls the rest of the paint together, it's uh, all of it. If you could just come up with one that stays white, satin wood is good, satin wood, oil. Make sure you lay them sections off the right way. That all makes a difference when it dries. Alright, I'll finish these moving on to these panels using my two inch. I've worked it in. Now you don't really want to be getting paint on these flats, so just be careful. And again, it's all about spreading the paint out an even coat, not applying too much and working it into the corners. The reason I do a lot of brush strokes is it's called feathering. I'm working the paint so it's nice and even so on the final finish it looks like a perfect finish you've not got like a lump of the opacity isn't stronger in one area than it is in another that's what you're after there's, there's nothing worse than that
trying to build the paint up on some of these sharp edges as well because like I say it's so difficult and you're also not uh, trying to draw back too much on certain edges otherwise you'll get a paint build up and then you'll start running some very fine balance and it's all visual you know some of the bits flipping, some of the bits you're not seeing here is the fact that I am trying to get the opacity just right gloss as well if you put too much on in a certain area that's it it's, it's difficult to get off so it's just that fine balance of how much you put on and spread it out in that particular area because you know you can't be putting a lump on in one area and trying to spread it out around the whole board timber there. I like painting doors like this when they've already been done and you actually turn up and you've got to do them for the second time because you can get them looking really good. Right, now I've done them two panels. I'm going to drop to the top, cutting the bead on the top around the glass, and then do the top bar. And then I'm going to drop down and do this bar, followed by these two. So, one inch first, cut that top bit of glass in. Sure, you get into the corners and spread your paints out nice and evenly. Not easy trying to get the gloss to sit on all them edges. Right. And taking your two inch, you don't want to be going over onto this edge. Right, try and cut in that best you can. Literally, you're going over by 
a millimetre. Um, that's all you need to do, just a millimetre. You're going to be dragging back across any edges. If you're dragging back across edges, you're going to be creating runs. Always work away from if you can, or straight across them because you can't go over them. Just gone and created a load of paint on the glass there, which is no fault. That's what your cloth is for. This middle section first, um, this doesn't matter too much how you go over the edges, how far you go over, because you're going to be painting them in a, in a second. trying to get the paint flat across and towards the edges uh, without causing runs. Pick some bits up from somewhere. And then you can cut in your glass. I hate to try and do this with water-based paint, I really would. Again, I'm just trying to close up them brush marks across, so it looks nice and solid. So you hear people saying, I put about six coats of paint on and it still doesn't look right, it still looks wrong. And that's because every coat they've put on, they've not uh, evened it out enough and shut up the brush marks and made it look nice and solid. And that's where being a professional painter counts. Because you understand that.
get a lot of people saying, why don't you use a roller? And half the time, the reason people use rollers is because they can't use a brush. not easy. But it's a good way of getting a nice gloss, sorry, uh, like a glass finish to your gloss work. I'll have to show you sometime what I mean by when I'm trying to close up an area and get the opacity of that area very even. Right, on to the sides, so I won't show you this next bit, but again I'm going to cut in down the side of the glass and then bring in each side down. Finished. Now, it's very important, check over your glass, make sure you've not got any paint spots on your glass, and then double check you've got no runs or build up of paint in the corners, because that's where you're going to get it. Right, so I'll give you a quick look over that. Oh. 